What's up YouTube? Welcome back to Gluten-Free Learning and in this video we are going to be looking at studying some integration techniques and specifically the trapezoidal method. So when using the trapezoidal method these this integration technique only works with definite integrals and that means we just have a lower and an upper bound because this is a numerical technique and we're going to get an approximate value so if we don't have a lower and upper bound then there's no way that we can use numerical techniques and specifically the trapezoidal method to even integrate um, our function because we are just us using an approximation to get values which you'll see how we can uh, evaluate the area under the curve so that's why we need lower and upper bounds for this method to work so let's say we have some function f of x and we are trying to evaluate it from a to b now without taking the integral how would we do that? How would we use numerical integration techniques to solve the interval? So the first thing that you want to do, you want to think of how many panels, how many trapezoids you want to split this up into. So let's just say we want to split this up into three panels. So this is one, two, and three. So three trapezoid, three panels is what they might call it in your textbook. And we want to find the area of each and add them up. And that is going to give us an approximation of the integral, the area under the curve between our two points A and B. Alright, now remember that the width of each of these trapezoids is going to be equal. And that's going to be called delta x. And it's going to be the same throughout every trapezoid. So they're all even intervals delta x. And we know that delta x has to equal B minus A over N. N being the number of panels the number of uh, trapezoids that we're using, right? So that's our delta x. And being a trapezoid, this is saying that we are using first order approximation. Because we're approximating trapezoids with a linear line between each point. And it is linear. Between each point, it will be linear. So if we had a higher order estimate and then our estimated shape will be curved between each point, but because we're doing a first order approximation, then we're going to have a straight line between each point. And the trapezoidal method develops first order polynomials. And the formula is pretty easy. So the formula just ends up being this. So we could have an infinite amount of terms, and it can go up to n as n approaches infinity. But at first, we just want to decide how many n terms we want to use to get the best approximation. Obviously the higher the n, the better the approximation. But this is the basic formula. We have delta x over 2, which was our interval that we had defined over here, our even, inter our even intervals, and that's multiplied by f of x0 plus 2f of x1 plus 2f of x2, all the way up to f of n. So one thing to notice that in this formula, the coefficient outside the n terms is going to be 1, and then the coefficient multiplying all of the internal terms is going to be 2. And that's the only thing with the trapezoidal method that you need to really remember. And then this will give us an approximate estimate of the area under the curve. And you'll see with the example that whenever we have a concave up section, like you'll see here between our intervals, let's call this x0, x1, x2, and x3. So we have a equals x1, or x0, and then our x1, x2, and b equals x3. And you'll see in between our x2 and our x3 that we have a concave up shape, and we're going to get an overestimate when we have concave up. And similarly, when we have concave down, we get an underestimate. So why would we even use this if it doesn't even give us the exact answer, if, we, if it doesn't give us the exact integral? So the reason that we need to use this is for, for computer applications, because for computers, when we program in MATLAB or whatever, they don't know how to take an integral unless they have a pre-programmed formula. So if we can program a formula and we can increase n you know, to infinity or whatever, an exact estimate or as close to exact estimate as, as possible, and then this, will, this makes it easier for the computer to think and for the computer to come up with the answer because computers are dumb and they need us to tell them what to do. So that's kind of the beauty of this. We can actually use the formulas to take an approximate interval or integral numerically with computer applications. So let's do an example. 
So if we have the function y equals e of x, and we want to evaluate the integral between 0 and, say, 10. Now, we can uh, split this up into as many panels as you want, but because we have an even number 10, I'm just going to split it up into um, n equals 5. So then we get a nice number of uh, even intervals. So by saying n equals 5, our delta x is going to equal 10 minus 0 over 5, right? Because we had our a or our b minus our a, remember from our formula from above, all over 5, and that equals 2. So delta x equals 2. And then one thing to remember with um, the trapezoidal method that whatever your n equals, we're going to have n plus 1 terms inside of our f of x function. So for example, now that we have n equals 5, our function f of x equals delta x over 2 is going to have 6 terms, which I'll show you in a minute. So remember our delta x is 2, so this is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. So x naught is going to be 0, x1 is 2, x2 is 4, x3 is 6, x4 is 8, and x5 is 10. So now all we need to do is write out the formula and literally just calculate the numbers, and it's that simple. So from above, f of x equals delta x over 2. So as I was saying earlier, when we have 5n, we have n panels, we have n trapezoids. We're going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 x's, right? We're going to have 6 terms in. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So let's keep that in mind. Whatever you say your n is going to equal, it's going to be n plus 1 terms in your f of x function. So this equals 2 over 2. Remember, x naught was 0, so we have e to the 0 plus. So it's literally this simple. So now we just have 2 over 2 times our function at all of our different x values. And remember that we have our, our two coefficients on all of the inner. And we have just the 1 on either ends. So and this gives us an answer of approximately 22,434. So this is all concave up too. So remember when I said before that when we get a concave up function that we are going to have an overestimate. So let's just calculate quickly um, the actual, the real value, the, the actual interval or integral. If we take the integral of e to the x from 0 to 10 dx, that equals e to the 10 minus e to the 0, right? Because the integral of e to the x is e to the x. And this equals 22,026 minus 1, right? So we get a little bit higher of a value. Our value is higher, which is what we had predicted because we have a concave up function, so we're going to get an overestimate. And what we can also do, we can calculate the error. The error in this is just going to be our uh, 22,494 minus 22,025 divided by our original function, or the uh, the actual value, sorry, or divided by our calculated value. And that equals just about 2%. So that's not, that's not really that bad. That's pretty good. Not a bad estimate. So that is it. That's literally it. It's that simple. All you need to remember is concave up is an overestimate, concave down is an underestimate, and then just try and pick an end value that will give you nice even intervals depending on what your... Uh, um, what your lower and upper bounds are. And that's it. So that was the trapezoidal method for integration techniques and not actually having to take the integral. So thanks for watching. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe and check out my website. There's a link in the description.